Alhamdulillah wa salam wa rasulullah. It's a pleasure and honor uh, to be with you today. Uh, the journey started 1982 when I met you for the first time. Alhamdulillah. And uh, I came here as a medical student trying to finish my doctor of medicine. I was qualified from Al-Azhar University Medical School in 1976, isn't it? I came here end of 1977. I had nothing to do with charity work. I had at all. I had an act He's one of the guys of Islamic belief. And... Uh, we discovered that we have to have a, to play a role in the famine which happened in Eritrea and Tigray in 1983. If you remember the era of Bob Geldof, Sir Bob Geldof, Band Aid and Live Aid. At that time, there was no Muslim charities in the country. A lot of mosques. A lot of mosques here and there. And it was a friend of mine colleague of mine in medical in, in Birmingham University doing his PhD in chemistry and I was doing my doctor of medicine in medicine and we started very simple start extremely simple start no budget no vision no plan no resources no office nothing whatsoever Nothing. But we said, him and myself, let us do something. What is this something? I visited Sudan in December 1983. I was introduced to the people who came from Eritrea and Tigray, which, which were a part of Ethiopia at that time. Now Eritrea is an independent country. And they gave us some photographs. I said, I have no clue of charity work. Zero. Nothing whatsoever. Then on the way back from Khartoum to Cairo, I stopped to sit down with my family and tell them about the story of the famine in Eritrea and Tigray at the time. I raised from my family and 1,500 Egyptian pound at that time. And the 20 pence for my young uh, man, like my friend here, Amr, was nine years old. Now he's a professor in the university. Uh, his name is Basim, which is a smiling face. We came, Ahsan and myself, we were legging it from door to door, to mosque to mosque, to shop to shop, to city to city, to distribute handmade leaflets. My wife, you remember something called typewriter? <laughs> Do you remember? You, you know what typewriter mean? Something you type and it writes. But you type and it writes. If you don't type, it doesn't write. With a telephone, you don't type and write, it types and writes. You got it? Do you speak English? I speak Urdu. <laughs> anyway, typewriter from home with my wife doing all these appeals, very strange appeals at that time. But we started it. Very simple start, brothers. Don't ever think that because we don't have resources, we don't have facilities, we don't have big names like the people you can't win, you can't start, you can't deliver. No, you can. Our first office was a small donation box. We bought it from Sheffield, from somebody called Hassan al Katib, rahmatullahi and 16 pounds. We fixed three donation boxes in 517 Mosley Road, one in the front entrance, one in the main prayer hall, and one near the kitchen. So we don't we did not leave any chance for anybody to come unless he or she put some money 
in the donation box. We did not have any office at that time. Ihsan and I used to go every Saturday to attend the Islamic circle and to open the donation box. Five pound, ten pound, twenty pound, twenty pound, checks, checks, checks. Alhamdulillah, at that time, this was a very, very simple start. Very simple start. In 1986, we thought to have an office. Big move. There was a room next to the donation box, three meter by three meter, full of a lot of rats and mice. Mice? Or, who's the bigger, the rat or the mice? Rats. Rats. Or, or big people. <laughs> <laughs> And we used, to have, we used to work in this office. And one of the good things happened with the Asian community. One of them during Kurbani, which is 1986, 87. He said, I want a Baqarah. Baqarah in Arabic means cow. And Baqarah in Urdu means sheep. When he told, he told me Baqarah, I said cow, okay. It's seven sheep, 235 Pound. He gave me the 235 pound and he went home. His wife told him, This man is a thief. <laughs> <laughs> because a sheep at that time was 20 pound in England. How about in India or Pakistan or whatever it is? He came back next day, he said, Sir, he didn't, know, he, didn't know, he didn't want to say that I'm a thief. He said, How much is the Baqarah? I said, 235 pound. A sheep for some. He said, You said Baqarah. Yes, Baqarah. But Baqarah is for me, is a cow, not a sheep. <laughs> so I have given him the money back. And so I just took about 35 pounds or 25 pounds, something at that time. The second thing, every Pakistani brother and sister come to a Huda Hafiz. I don't know what Huda I thought it was Huda Hafiz. Huda is the name of a woman. Hafiz is her father. Everybody coming to the office. Huda, Hafiz, Huda. Hey, who is, I said, who is this woman called Huda? <laughs> huh? Huda, she's Allah, isn't it? This is our lack of igra, uh, our ignorance of the Urdu language at that time. But we were the first people to start Qurbani to be sent abroad in 1986. 86 was the first Qurbani group. So it was 600 Qurbani, Malawi and Afghanistan at that time. Now I don't know how many thousands. They made uh, maybe 100,000 every year or something like this. But to be very honest, for the young sisters and brothers, never ever let anybody to stop you because you don't have resources. We make resources. If you believe in what you can do, if you believe in what you can deliver, if you believe in your mission and your aims and objectives. This is what happened nearly 40 <coughs> years ago. How did you spend Ramadan? Ramadan is next week, isn't it? Thursday or Wednesday, something like this. We started a project called Caravan Tour. Caravan Tour. We did it during Ramadan. None of the Islamic leaf workers for six years or seven years from the 89 till about 95, 96, spend Ramadan with their family. They were on the road from the first day of Ramadan till even after Eid. Germany, USA, Italy, Holland, France, Belgium, UK, none, none. We used to go to take the car from Birmingham to the north. Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Bradford, Glasgow, uh, Dundee, Aberdeen, then we we'll come back for the whole month. Every night we we'll stay in a mosque to sell something for the community because at that time all the mosques were very poor. They cannot afford to go to London to buy things to carry perfumes, mask, Quran, hijab to the sisters used to wait for us every Ramadan to come there. Sleep in the mosque, stay in the mosque, eat in the mosque, be with the people in the mosque. This was our actually starting point at that time. But you remember, 
when I used to remember these good old days to leave your family and your children for a whole month the most blessed month the month of family the month of community and you go for a bigger cause Allah will never let you down with your family Allah will never let you down of being able to achieve your objectives for two weeks sometimes five weeks for building any organization or any da'wah some people have to sacrifice their time to spend their money and their effort and sometimes to change their career we remember the story of Islam I remember one of the historian I'm not sure he was a British or he was European he was not a Muslim he was talking about the Prophet ﷺ he said the man with a young child with a woman with a friend started the journey of Islam more than 1400 years ago now they are 1.7 billion people a long journey you have to start the first step in such a journey Muhammad sallallahu Ali radiallahu anhu his cousin Khadija his wife and Abu Bakr his colleague or his friend started this journey which is a never ending journey up till now very simple but dedicated committed and with a vision oh wallahi ya am la wada'a ash-shams fi yamini wal qamara fi yasari ala an atruk hadha ad-din ma taraktuhu abadan oh my uncle when he came to negotiate with him to leave islam if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to leave Islam, I will never do it unless and until Allah make it apparent and available for everyone. A journey could be starting by somebody like you, somebody like you, somebody like you. Don't ever underestimate what Allah has put at the back of our mind, inside our souls, in our spirit of capabilities and abilities needs to be discovered <coughs> the intellectuals the in, uh, in, in intellectual no anyway Allah has put in our see what Allah said to Adam وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة when he asked the uh, the uh, the uh, well, discussion with the angels, Allah, He told them, I'm going to put in this land a man. He said, Are you going to put in the land what can fight one another, kill one another, spill the blood of one another? He told them, No. And He went to tell Adam a knowledge which the angels do not have or did not have. He taught Adam السلام, all the names of the subject of the, of the science and technology and the subject for life to build life on earth. Then he came back in the dialogue with, with angels. He said, can you tell me the names of this subject? He said, no, we don't know. We don't know. He told Adam, Adam, tell them. He told them. Then he asked them, to make sujood to Adam. So they did. Because Adam was higher in status than the angels. That's you are the sons of Adam. But inside of Adam, they gave him all the malakat, all the intellectuals, capability to discover what inside his heart and mind and soul to enable him to build life on earth. Not only on earth, to discover what in the moon. What's in the skies there? That's why there's the difference between you and the angels. You are better than the angels because you know the wrong and the right. The angels cannot do wrong. 
But when we do wrong, we ask forgiveness. When we do right, Allah will bless us for more. This is how we started. Young people, you want to become Hafiz? Good for you. But I want you to become Alim. Hafiz is good, but not good enough unless you apply what you recite into a community action to help everybody and anybody. And everybody and anybody. When you build community, when you support people, when you serve people, like the Prophet ﷺ was very caring of his Jewish neighbor and the non-Muslim Christian who came to learn about Islam in his mosque in Medina and to inside the mosque in Medina. He was actually sitting them down and even let them to, let them to pray there when the time of prayer came. They came with the traditional cross or traditional dress of, you know, the traditional cross of the dress of the uh, Eastern Orthodox churches at that time. And they let them, because the, the issue was not the dress. The issue is the discussion about what you want and the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people from Najran, from Yemen at that time. It's about no resources coming back to it. You don't need resources because, you know what? You are full of resources. But the difference between you and Sahaba, Sahaba, or is the companions of the Prophet, like the disciples of Isa, alayhi salam, Jesus, peace be upon him, have discovered their secret code, or what they call it, passwords. So they open all the files in their hearts, in their minds, in their soul that became them Sahaba. And they make miracles. Like the disciples of Jesus discovered their passwords. The disciples of Moses discovered their passwords. And they're being remembered for thousands of years after they die. It's up to us young people. I'm very happy that you have got a lot of young people in this room. It's up to us to discover huh, what has been hidden as treasures inside our hearts and minds and soul. It's a challenge. We are living in a high-tech country, our country. We have to become high-tech people by using their high-tech to serve humanity, not to serve ourselves. Not to serve ourselves. I came from Antakya in Turkey last month. I was between Turkey and uh, Jordan for about nearly 17, 18 days. When I visited Antakya, I called it the city of dead. The deserted city. The city of ghosts. When we traveled there in 57 seconds, in 57 seconds, Allah was His will change the life of people totally, make it totally different for people in 57 seconds. At that time, 7,500 buildings were destroyed or demolished just in one city. The rest having cracks. Now in Turkey, 90,000 buildings have been destroyed in an area of 1,000 square kilometers. It's like post-Second World War. Have you seen the Second World War? Post it. See what? The destruction of London, destruction of Coventry, which is not far from here. And even they say, why people, the, the German actually, destroying Coventry? Because Coventry has a lot of, a lot of factories. <coughs> actually, London was nearly demolished most of the building there. This was exactly... Antakya was like that. And when we met the people there, extremely cold weather. But family was staying on the road, waiting for the bodies of the beloved ones. For days. Men and women. Remember, that life can start with a second, can last for a second, 
and can end at any second. Nobody can estimate when his life or her life will be ending. Could be now, could be tomorrow, could be next week, any time. Exactly like what happened in tsunami. In tsunami, just a wave from the ocean wiped out, wiped away 250,000 people in a matter of minutes or hours. 250,000 people. No record was being, was being kept. Nothing. Khalas finished. A whole city. The same way of traveled from Banda Aceh in Indonesia to reach Sri Lanka <coughs> to claim the life of 50,000 people. It did not stop there. It reaches the ocean next to Somalia to claim 30 people near the ocean, the life of 30 people. So what I'm saying, young people, don't ever trust dunya. Dunya could be deceiving, glamorous. I'm young, I'm strong, I'm powerful. Ah, I can't. You can't do everything. You have to take it by reasoning and logic. Reasoning is very important. To go back to the origin of reasoning, which is Allah, the source of reasoning. And choose such reasoning to build, not to destroy. To bridge, not to cut the relationship, not to divide. To connect, not to disconnect. And to love, not to hate. This is the message of all the prophets. All the prophets from Adam alayhi salam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, including Isa and Musa and everybody. Everybody. The story of the struggle of all the prophets was a never and still never ending story. As I mentioned. But when we listen to it, we have to realize how much suffering they had and their disciples and companions had to let you to believe in the message of Jesus or Moses or Muhammad sallallahu This is it. People used to walk on their feet for thousands of miles to gain knowledge, to teach others. Do you know somebody called Bukhari? Do you know somebody called Bukhari? Imam, Imam Bukhari. Huh? Al-Imam Nafs. He was very, very well-learned scholar of the narration of the says of the Prophet ﷺ. Very famous. No internet, nothing. No Wi-Fi, TikTok, Facebook, <laughs> Twitter. You tweet me? Uh, I tweet you back. <laughs> you hashtag me, I gash hat. I hashtag. hashtag. I, 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 I tag hash him. <laughs> <laughs> they don't speak English. Though. So be tag hash, not hashtag. Huh? He went back at the age of 60 to, I think, Samarkand. And the Amir did not accept him. He told the soldiers, throw him out. Al-Bukhari. Then he went to another one, city called Bukhara. The same thing again. Third city. Three times, <coughs> El Imam al-Bukhari was thrown out of the cities as the most famous Imam who was collecting hadith. Then it was the night of Eid. It was the night of Eid. And he was so tired, walking from a city to a city to a city to a city, which took about hundreds of miles, each one, it's a journey. Then I told his companion or his student, Sonny, can I just relax for a while? Give me an hour to sleep. Then we can carry on the journey to the fourth city. This was the night of Eid. Imam Bukhari slept and slept forever. He never woke up. He died on the road. Imam Bukhari who collected all these great hadith, the authenticity of hadith, died in the middle of the road, suffering from expulsion. 
a man like this, this is how he has been treated by ignorant, but he's still living in our hearts up till now and forever. And you know that it's the most authentic book actually in Islam after Al-Quran. It's how he was struggling to bring the knowledge to us. Coming back to this journey, I'm not going to talk too much about Islamic belief, but I want you to ask me questions about how can you make a change? How can you become a change maker? How can you serve and save and help community? Your next door neighbor, door neighbors. One, uh, a mosque in, in Birmingham, they realized that one of the elderly men, our brothers, Yani, English, non Muslim, was not coming out. I've not seen him for a long time. <coughs> this was two months ago. And when he came out after knocking the door, because of the, the electricity was extremely expensive, the old man was wearing too many clothes to keep himself warm. It was shocking to the Muslims who did not go to ask about him a week or two weeks beforehand. How on earth you let your next door neighbor living alone without knocking the door to help them? And they started to realize their mistakes as young people with the resources to help this elderly man who is not a Muslim. This is your duty. This is our duty. Help does not have any boundaries. Does not have any limit. Does not have. It's not. It's not for special people. It's for everybody. If he died, such a man, all the Muslim next to his house living there will be asked by Allah, why didn't you knock his door? And you know that such a man is living this door, his house alone. And this is our duty, young brothers and sisters. Help. Humanity is without any border, without any barriers, not for any color, for anybody and for everybody. Is my message clear for you, brothers and sisters? Okay. Now I will stop and I will take questions and comments from you. Because I want to learn from you, from the sisters at the back and the brothers in the front. يلا فيرست كويشن لا 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 انا لا 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 الحمد لله واقف لا انا انا انت بتريحني كوني اشوفك قدامي يا سلام I'm just composing music الحمد لله ask questions ان شاء الله and I'm ready to answer ان شاء الله no problem ايوه جبنا الميكروفون ده this is a more rooming uh, microphone. Do you like to have the questions for you only, or he can speak and then have questions together? Up to you. Yeah, I think questions first. I, 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 you haven't he's introduced him neighbor, to me. So huh? He's, he, he's yeah, but he's your neighbor, I don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he said the questions for you. Oh, uh, okay. Questions, please. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Bapali. Jazakallah, Hamel, for that. Uh, Presentation. Oh. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Okay. The first one of them is um, a lot of the youth these days. Yeah. We um, <coughs> sometimes give the excuses that we are very busy. Yes. In terms of our work, our family commitments, university sometimes. Mm. Um, that's why we can't really do much when it comes to Islamic work. Like you've said, you know, volunteering and all that. I, I mean, I'm sure you will not tell us not to look after our work, our family and university. I think it's a matter of combining these two together. That's right. In your own estimation and from your own experience, how is the best way of combining your usual job and at the same time you're doing the Islamic work without any compromise between both of them? Yeah. That's my first question. Uh, that's my first uh, answer one by one? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. First of all, know that the barakah of the time is in the hand of Allah. The barakah of the time is at the hand of Allah. I will give you an example happened to me 
I always fail. I will never pass exam from the first time. My driving test was five times, alhamdulillah. Even proposing a, a wife was... Uh, <laughs> I don't know how many times I've been refused, in spite of the fact I was very handsome with, with hair. <laughs> I used to have hair, not like you. <laughs> and uh, uh, my, uh, even my, my, my doctor of medicine, I failed, alhamdulillah. And, but I, I failed to try again. I keep trying. On that day, that was a cyclone in Bangladesh, if somebody of you, 1991 cyclone, 25 million people, Bengali people were underwater. And I was about to submit my thesis before November 1991. And there were two young men from Bradford raised 30,000 pounds. At that time, was a big amount of money. British Airways gave us two first-class tickets to go there. I was going around all the halakas, circles. Can anybody go? Because I have an exam. It was June, July. Nobody. I said, okay, fine. I dropped my thesis, put it, and they called people on Friday morning before Juma that I'm going, khalas. Monday, I'm going with you. You know what happened? To see the blessing of Allah, you cannot become more generous than God. At the same day, on the same evening, the same data, the numbers and the figures that I had been collecting for six years, Allah reshuffled it in my mind to produce a new theory. After the decision that, as if you are telling Allah, I'm going to leave my private business until you cannot be more charitable to me than me, than him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave me this idea or this theory. I went back to the supervisor on Monday morning, the senior lecture. I told him, said, this is very good. This is a new theory in the history. In the history of spina bifida. You know spina bifida in this country? Everywhere. And an encephaly, which is a the, the baby's born without head, without brain, and without spinal cord at the back. This was my thesis. At that time I learned Never think that when you give Allah something small, Allah will never respond with something bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Here is the balance. I'm not telling you to ignore your private life, but balance between both of them. In my case, I have a wife. Without her, I could not have been able to be with you here after 40 years. She was the one who supported me 24-7. 24-7. That's why when you, when sister get married or brother get married, choose the individual who can look after you because of his knowledge, because of his religion, because of his manner, not because of his money and because of his look or because of her money and her look. Money goes away. Like a lot of millionaires in Turkey nowadays, they lost everything and became homeless in less than 57 seconds. So sisters, when you marry somebody, don't marry somebody who is actually going to be very handsome like myself. <laughs> when I was handsome. Now I'm, I'm not hand, the hand or the sum. Because when you put the hand next to the sum, it becomes handsome. <laughs> My Arabic thing, <laughs> they, got the, they got the joke. Silly joke, huh? Nice Say silly. Joke. Huh? Good joke. What do you mean? Hand and some? Become handsome? So it becomes some hand. Oh. <laughs> so, no matter what you give, Allah will never let you down. But switch your intention. And try to find the right partner. Especially if you are married. If you are not married, young brothers, believe me, I never passed an exam because I was a good uh, student. I passed an exam because I failed. Then I decided to pass the exam again. Then I failed. Then I started to decide to pass again. Keep trying, trying, trying with good intention. With good intention that you are doing this 
I want to become a doctor. When I came here, Bismillah, MashaAllah, in Egypt we know that actually for doctor you have five ain. Arabia, car. Arusa, wife. Izba, farm. Uh, Ayada, clinic. What else? Something number five. Arabia, Ayada, Izba, Arusa. Amara, Amara, Amara building. This is the five ends. Each one of us came as a young uh, doctor. We have these five. The wife, the land, I mean, agricultural land, the building, the car, and the clinic. When I came here, this was at the back of my mind. But when I saw what, or we saw, not me, we saw what's happening in Africa at that time, this became trivial. The priority changing all the time. But try your best to be the best in your job. Try your best to be the best in knowledge. And try your best to be the best in manner. In manner. Because science and knowledge without manner is a waste of time. Devils have a lot of knowledge, but do not have manner. This for the first question. Yes, young brothers and young sisters. Second question before we go to somebody else. Yeah. Second question. Maybe you do with the mic. No, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Because we're actually uh, recording. My second question. My second question actually goes on from the last um, part of your of your answer. Is about sometimes you are, you know, on the path of tower and you see a lot of challenges. And yes. You feel that you know you're gonna give up. There's no point just continuing. In your long years of experience, I'm sure you would have faced a lot of challenges. What are those key points that you, you reckon that you need as a Dahia or as somebody on the part of Islam that will keep you going when these challenges actually struck? When you keep remembering the people that you claim that you are helping them, when you visit them, when you go even in UK to the neighborhood, to find the elderly, the lonely, the divorcee, the children who actually uh, were run away from house. All this problem is there, here. Apart from people in Africa or people in Asia. Problem is not only in Africa, or Pakistan, or India, or Latin America. Problem is at home here. A lot of people in the neighborhood need your help. Need your help. If you see them, you will say, Alhamdulillah, that Allah give me a better opportunity to help them. If you don't go out to discover, to connect, to learn, to work, to help, you will never be affected. And you'll be demoralized. That's why the Prophet said, Al Muslim, Alladi Yukharat Nas, Wasbar al Azam, Khairum Alladi La Yukharat Nas, Wasbar al Azam. The Muslim who mixes with people and be patient on their atrocity against him. Far more better than the one who does not come out and does not mix with people. So mix with people. The more you mix, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more you know. The more you know, the more you understand. The more you understand, the more you, you help more and more. You cannot put the people who have the knowledge on the same category with the people who have no knowledge. The people who have the knowledge will realize the responsibility. Will, they, will realize the, the, the depth of the problem in the society. And this is what we call it awareness. Awareness. Community awareness is incredible. To be, to be, to be taught to, me, to be shown to myself about how much the multinational company, companies are, th are eh, stealing the resources of Africans from different parts of Africa. You know that the richest country in Africa called Democratic Republic of Mo Congo, the richest, the richest, and this is the poorest country with five million internally displaced people with the highest rate of rape 
of young girls and women with 85 armed groups and still all the treasure of DRC is being shipped somewhere else. You know that a country like Mali is the land of gold. And the country of France is the land of no gold. But the gold reserve in France is more than 2,500 tons. Where it gets from? And look at Mali and look at France. Look at all this. This is where you need to stand up for the rights of people. If you remember Che Guevara, remember Che Guevara in, from Argentina, is it Latin America? What do you call him in English? Guevara. Guevara? Huh? Che Guevara. Okay, yes. your English is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've been practicing like that. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, he discovered. Why we have seven or eight or ten or twenty countries in Latin America? We speak the same language, we have the same religion, even mostly Catholic, and we have the same history, we have the same culture. Why they divided us? And he was going around from a country to a country to a country to a country to raise the awareness of the people to stand up against the landlord and the enemies of humanity. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King. You know, Malcolm X stood up for the rights of people. You know, Nelson Mandela, South Africa, stood up for the rights of people. And all those people, great people, Ali Aiza Begovic in Bosnia, being tortured, put in prison as well. Nothing comes for free. Nothing comes without you offering your time, your effort, your knowledge, even sometime your life. Like Dr. Martin Luther King was shot dead. Chi Jifara was shot dead. Uh, Malcolm X was shot dead as well. Because they stood up, not for themselves, stood up for community. Some of them stood up for humanity. And this is how. Dawah is not just a circle or a lesson in the mosque or a lesson in a church. Dawa is action in the community. Let your dawa to be actionable in the community. Let the community to see your care by being with them, not by sitting at exclusively reciting Quran at home and leaving the community alone. This will actually reinvigorate your uh, what do you call it, uh, soul and mind to enable you to keep going, 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 non-stop. Because you are relying on whom, brother? On the source of supply, not on somebody like myself or himself or herself. This is the answer. Dawah is not something to be just taught in the mosque only. We have to be actionable. In the community. <coughs> Anyone else? Yes, brother. Give him the microphone. <coughs> I'd like to ask about um, the donations. Yeah. Right. About the donations. Donation, yeah. Which are gathered. I've heard. Yeah, thank you. I've heard and read about that in Europe or America, much of the donations are spent on administration, and there's a problem. The donations are mis misspent. That is to um, that is to say, in administering the charity and but how to keep um, the administration costs to be minimum yes. because some of the executives are earning uh, roughly about a million um, administrators are earning 50,000, 70,000, 80,000 they, they are 
as their salary. So in, in Western countries, this, I don't want to name names. No, 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 no problem. Yeah. But um, this For, is what's happening. Yeah, Jazakallah khair. First of all, yeah. it is, yeah. Administration is something which is necessary to do any work. There is no work without administration. Because when you start as a very small organization, you might not need to spend money employing people. But when the organization has got 20 offices, 30 offices, 15 offices here and there, it needs to employ people. And if you want to listen to my figures, which sometimes could be shocking. First of all, the people who said zero admin percent, tell them that you are liars and refer to me. And if they want to meet me, they come and see me. Tell them not lying. Nothing called zero admin. Nothing. Unless you go to heaven. You know when you want to go to heaven, brother? You just wish. Say that, oh, chicken. It is in front of you. There's no, no, no difficulty. Yeah, come with us to heaven. What about beef? <laughs> beef, uh, clothes, uh, gold, anything. Just wish. There's no administration in heaven. On earth, if we're working at the national level, administration might be from 5% to 15%. It depends on the operation. If you have got 5 or 7 or 8 or 10 offices, actually in the whole country, you need to employ uh, accountant, you need to employ project managers, you need to employ fund, and all these sort of things to maintain the operation. If you are doing international work, it might go from 15% to 25%. Because they have got operation to run in the headquarter, operation to run in the field, and they have got a lot of operations. And all the money spent in the field is a part of the donation of employing local staff to help. That actually, you are, you are empowering the community. So, the reasonable on the international level from 15 to 25%. Some of the ulama said what? Said there are certain special exceptional cases. Certain special exceptional cases when you found people stranded in no man's land and they're going to die, you might hire a plane to make an airdrop. Here's the administration could become 50%. Because in this group of people, they are dying if you don't bring them. One of some of them said, spend 50% to let the other 50% reach. But these exceptional cases. Okay? So on the salary, on the way to try to save people. You know when this case of Turkey, some of this money was spent on the rescue team, the rescue workers. Very expensive to bring them with the dogs and the other to clear, uh, to take the dead bodies. Some of the money could be spent on clearing, clear, clearing the rubbles. It's a part of the donation. Some of the money would be spent on actually rebuilding the houses again. All these kind of things and more. Some of the money would be spent on advocacy. When you promote, how can you build uh, earthquake resistant houses? To spend on the engineers who will be allocating, uh, telling you where to go and build the houses, where to go and build. All this will cost money. So in life, there's nothing called admin cost zero. Second point to add to this is zakat. Zakat, you know zakat, which is actually the alms due. 2.5% 2. 2. of your saving over if you are good this money in the bank for a year. Uh, sorry? Yeah, it's not a tax. It's, it's different. Anyway, whatever it is. Actually, Allah said, al alayha. The people who are administering zakat. How can you collect zakat if you don't have somebody to collect zakat? If you don't have somebody to make study on the people who need zakat? If you don't have somebody to administer how to spend the zakat, to write the report. And people sometimes in the organization, for a purpose of fundraising, 
or PR said, zero percent zakat. Allah said, spend on the people who are employed to collect zakat. If you keep saying zero percent, I will I, accept it. But tell me where they are going to pay the salaries and the cost from. Any donation, just listen to me, all of you, coming to any organization is a donation. If somebody sponsors my salary, I have to declare it. If somebody sponsors your salary, we have to declare it. If somebody, businessman, paying for the organization, the electricity, the water, and the rate, we have to declare it as in-kind donation. Sometimes we deceive donors by saying admin zero. Nothing called the admin zero. Nothing called the admin zero. But you have to be transparent. To be very honest, brother, I'm just trying to say some of the non-Muslim Western organizations are more transparent than some of the Muslim organizations. And that's actually, I've been in this business for 40 years, and they saw the both sides of the coin. So they might say that we spend 25 or 30%, it's haram. And one of my brothers would say, no, 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 it's 0%. I will challenge the one who says 0%. I will challenge him, and they will roast, grill, and fry him. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Thank you. Any other question from sisters? From brothers? Don't be shy, sisters. And the sisters, at the time of the Prophet, used to stand up in the mosque and ask questions. Even they were correcting Hazrat Umar, because Umar was talking about the dowry. Is that right? And he, she told him in the middle of everybody, Who are you? Allah said, when I tell him, Ihdahunna Qantaran, if you give as much money as you give, Omar said, okay, thank you. You remind me of the verses in the Quran. So sisters, speak up. Because you are going to be the mother of the nation, the daughter of the nation, actually, and the sister of the nation. Al-Umm Madrasatun is a adatuha, adatu shaban, tayyib al-araqi. Um, the mother, is an institution. If it's being very well prepared, she will prepare the whole nation, inshallah. So don't be shy to ask questions. Any other question, brothers or sisters? Or? Huh? <laughs> خلص خلص مرة واحدة. Which one of them? Uh, I got two. You established 2005. Humanitarian Forum? Yeah, oh, I see. Okay, fine, fine. But I can stand up now. <laughs> because it's a difficult question. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, alhamdulillah. In 2008, after Islamic Relief became very well established, alhamdulillah, uh, from Islamic Relief, I learned to create other organizations with the money of Islamic Relief. One of them was called Humanitarian Forum. The second one is still functioning called Muslim Church Forum in London. A third one was called uh, Somali Relief and Development Forum. A fourth one called Yemen Relief and Development Forum. And another one called HIV AIDS Fund. And the sixth one called uh, Media Forum, Muslim Media Forum. So I have done 20, nearly 25 years of relief work with Islamic Relief. I said, Khalas, enough is enough. Let me do something else. Islamic Leaf graduated me. Graduated me. Is that right? Yes, Marana? Graduated me. It's very difficult. Extremely more difficult than working in Islamic Leaf. To bring people together. Today I was coming from a meeting. About coordination meeting. About the needs of the Syrian inside Syria. To collect. Wallahi, I was through this forum, and my wife is the witness, sending voice messages, hundreds of voice messages in English and Arabic to people to attend the coordination meeting. I know them in person. I know them in person. 
most of them did not attend. Because the coordination is not on the level of their understanding. Communication, networking, coordination, building partnership is not there. That's why there's a lot of, a lot of waste of money. The humanitarian forum, which you're talking about, is to bring people together, Muslims and non Muslims, to sit down, to understand. See, I give you an example of how, how the West is doing it. Here there's something called SCHR. This is the largest 13 international non-Muslim organization on earth. Oxfam, Save the Children, Care International, Plan International, World Vision, Lutheran Churches. And if you put the budget of this organization together, it will not be less than 25-30 billion. Billion. B with B. How much you have in all our organization here? It's not 500,000 million or 600 million. But we don't sit together. Why those big organizations sitting together to coordinate, to direct, to make a strategy, to build a vision? If they want, with this about 30 or 40 million, billion, sorry, dollars or pounds, they can make a program for water and sanitation, program for education, program for health and sanitation, and so on. But we don't sit down together, unfortunately, as Muslims. That's why, the reason that Islamic Reef graduated me is to do this difficult work. Wallah, over the last four days, we're organizing two meetings on Zoom. And even my wife was telling me, stop, it's 11 o'clock in the evening. I said, this is America. It's not UK. So they stay about 5 o'clock there. They stay at the office. This is 6 o'clock in the morning. So it's the Middle East. It's 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and whatever it is. She was telling me as a mother, this is not for your age. And this is the coordination that you're talking about. And we're still not succeeding. 42 organizations of the 140 organizations who signed up our statement just filled the form. And about 26-27%. After hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of voice messages, it's difficult. Bringing people together is sometimes near to impossible. But we have to do it. Some of us have to do it. And we must do it because a lot of waste of resources, unfortunately, and this is what happened in the first week or two in Turkey earthquake. I, I, I have to stop? No, okay. No, no, no. No, no, I, no, no, no. But I want to enjoy what you're going to say. No. You see? And, and this, and this, one of the people who came from Syria and Turkey, who was actually the representative of Islamic Reef, said, please, we need to stop Hadr. Hadr in Arabic, lang uh, Arabic language is waste. Waste. West, a family have four blankets in this village, in this area, and the family living in the street. So this is where actually your question is very important to be tackled. And let you young people, you, you want to become half as, huh? Huh? Come, 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 come. He's already half, huh? Tell him, tell him, tell him. I will be elevated standing next to him because he has the Quran in his heart, in his mind, in his soul. I have nothing. So I learn from you. But I want you to make Quran in action. Like Hazrat Aisha, the wife of the Prophet. Sallam, used to describe him as he is a Qur'an walking on earth. His manner was Qur'anic. The knowledge of Qur'an should become values for community. The knowledge for Qur'an should become a community project to help people. You are hafiz, but transfer or transform your hafiz into action. Yes, sir? I finish now because we have got other brother. Keep the camera.
I think this. Dr. Hali, I think he needs more than one hour, as you can see. I think he needs uh, maybe many days of uh, serious of speeches. Is it? Yeah, I think uh, some relief uh, experience is very good, and we need to learn more. So, so the Dakala here, Dr. Hali, and he's only in Birmingham, so maybe we'll have him again, inshallah. No problem. Dakala here, thank you very much for your uh, speech. And now we move into. Uh, Rob Stewart? Stratton. Stratton, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. He's our neighbor, and uh, I've known that he is. He used to be the chairman of uh, Elliston Park. Park, where Gary Lineker used to play. Oh, really? uh -huh. the famous that's, Gary, huh? That's, that's why I know that he's a famous a celebrity as well, like you. No, 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 no I'm not celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to talk about his... Uh, journey. His journey and given his time for the youth to keep them away from street and you know uh, teach <coughs> their manners and discipline through sport and th this has been for many years maybe nearly 50 years and then uh, he is now doing other uh, charity he looks after disabled that he takes them for rest bite you know disabled especially with families with disabled, they, they suffer, they struggle with looking after their uh, members. So he comes in and he takes them in the carriage. He's got horses and, oh, and the carriage. So he takes them for a ride and uh, gives them a, a good time. So inshallah, I won't speak a lot about his experience and writing. <laughs> this is the trailer. This is the trailer of this uh, movie. So please. Uh, come with this some uh, PowerPoint. So yeah, one of my little sons, he got his uh, pictures together. So maybe it's better yeah, to yeah. speak. Yeah. I said uh, clear. Let me give you this uh, okay. microphone. Um, right here. Yes. Uh, we work with that one. This for the other one. Okay. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna switch that uh, light to so we can see better the. Uh, sorry. Go for that. That's better, yeah. Yeah. This one. Yes. Okay. You want to stand or you want to sit? Stand, down? I stand. Uh, I've got a sore bottom. We pray, sorry, we go. Can we pray now and later we no, pray? We pray 8.30 and then we have, we prayed our uh, uh, fifth uh, Isha and then we have food. Let's Everybody's have. invited for food to stay, please. So we're going to pray 8.30. Okay? Yeah, Thank you very much. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me tonight. It's a, it's a pleasure. Um, uh, as I say, I, I've had a journey through uh, a lot of careers. Um, and uh, when I was young, like a lot of you, I hadn't got any idea what I would do. And my life has led me to different journeys and different achievements, but a lot of satisfaction and a lot of pleasure out of helping others. So it all started after I left school um, and I became a police officer. I was a police officer for 30 years and I was brought up on a council estate not too far from here and uh, on the day that I joined the police I changed. Well I didn't change but my appearance changed because all the people that I knew knew me as Bob Stretton. On the day I came out of the police service and walked down the street with my uniform on and my helmet on, I was a police officer. Nobody saw Mr. Stretton, everybody saw the police officer. So walking round the estate, there was a little bit of animosity towards me. People doubted what I was then because I had changed, but I had not changed, I had not changed in here. So I thought to myself, how do I get people to trust me and make sure that I am doing good for the community? So, if I had a boy that came up and was antisocial, did a little bit of anti-damage and stuff like that, instead of taking him to court, I go into play football. And I used to say to him, you can either go court or you can come and play football for me. 
And I became not known as Bob Stretton the policeman. I became known as Bob Stretton the football coach that happened to be a policeman. Do you understand that? How people would look at me differently? And people communicated to me. And I was able to then talk to them. Whereas before they were worried about speaking to a police officer, they would speak freely to their football coach. And over the years, I've probably coached four or five thousand children and brought them on. As you've told, one of those people that I coached was Gary Lineker. Coached him for five years. I've coached a lot of professional players that have gone on to good careers. And that is the rewarding part about being a volunteer. Money you need... And I'll go on in a minute to see how I need money or you need money or the, uh, the charity needs money. But I just wanted to tell you that, how I have helped build, helped, not done it myself, a lot of help, help build facilities. So, one of the achievements that my wife was heavily involved in was in relation to disabled people. And these are very disabled people that have very, very limited skills in communication, mobility, and also their carers, because it is, is a, a massive, massive task to take on somebody that is so disabled that they can't move and they can't communicate. So we decided that we would try through our hobby of horses to help these people and we set up a charity called Springbridge Stables. Now we were lucky because we owned, we owned some land and we had some stables. But we had to then get special carriages that we used to take out people. And I'll pass these round so that you can, when, when you get fed up of hearing me, you can look at them. But these are people that are in carriages and to see the relationship that they got with the horses. Because although they couldn't communicate with other people very well, the horses, and you'll see the dogs, were able to communicate in some way to them. They had a relationship with them. So I'll pass these round. And you can have a look at the sort of thing we do. We take them out on carriages, which is pretty specialist, because they have to be strapped on with their wheelchairs. And whilst they go out on the carriages with the horses, they, the carers, we've got a special room where they can go into and have a coffee or sit just looking at the countryside and just communicate with each other and tell people how they're feeling, because again, it's difficult. But then we come on to the money part of it. We had to get, with people with wheelchairs, we had to get people safely out of their cars, into the wheelchairs, onto the carriages. And for that we needed what they call health and safety facilities. So we set about raising a lot of money in order to make sure that when we undertook these um, activities with these people that they were in a safe environment so that's what we did so we started off and we had to build one of the things that horses need are stables the dog come free but we built the stables with the help of grants I don't know what I've done here all right but another important part of making sure that people enjoyed the experience was making sure that the place, the stables looked immaculate. And this, we have a volunteer that comes up and does all the gardening so that when the carers come up, they can make sure that they're in a lovely place, nice sunny environment, everybody's happy. That's the field where the horses graze because you need a lot of land and you need a lot of hay. Horses eat 
a substantial... I never realised how much hay a horse can eat. So we need land to do that. Sometimes, most of the time, we take the people out on the road. But I got a friend, and that friend builds football stadia. He built Tottenham Hotspur's new ground. So I asked him one day if he could build me a stadium where I would be able to take people round safely, blind people, and give them an opportunity to drive a horse and carriage. Now, how do you do that? Well, you have somebody that knows what they're doing sitting next to them, and the blind person is sitting next to them, and you are talking to them. But you can't really take them on the road. It's too dangerous. So my friend said, I'll build you that, Bob. You pay for the materials, and I will build it. And he came down back, Six years ago, one November, with all his equipment, about two million pounds worth of equipment he brought. Two million pounds worth. And he did that in six weeks. And that's the sort of thing that if you ask and people can see that what you're doing is good, they will help you. He did say, by the way, that uh, you might as well have it floodlit while we're doing it. Because you'll never get the opportunity again. So he, pay, he paid for the floodlights. And when we'd done all this, people heard about it. And we wrote to Princess Anne and asked her if she'd come down and open it. And she said yes. So on the 6th of June 2005, Princess Anne arrived by helicopter <coughs> amid massive security and opened our facility and again that gave us a lot of credibility and a lot of <coughs> donations because if prince oh, if princess anne was supporting it then it showed just how much it meant to the whole community one person that comes every year to springbridge stables is santa claus and we do one of the barns out as a grotto. Everybody knows what a grotto is, where Santa lives. And we do it out so when he comes, he feels at home. <coughs> and we give out presents to all the disabled people. <coughs> and we raise every year. We don't charge for this. It's all free. And we raise every year from the donations of the local villagers and the, the local farmers over £2,000 towards the facility. So it's very kind. In fact, it was harder getting older Santa than it was Princess Anne. <coughs> and just to prove it, that's Princess Anne on the day with Yorkie. Now, Yorkie was one of our favourite horses. And there was a television programme where it gave awards to, ho to um, animals that helped out on charities and we went to Birmingham to the television studios where we had a presentation and Yorkie won the category of the best horse for helping people um, with disabilities and there is one last shot of Santa Claus once again with some of the people that we helped some of the carers some of the disabled people. One of the things that I will tell you about that is if I had my life again, I would do, I would hope to do exactly what I've done because it's fulfilling. It's not for me, it's for other people. And you cannot do a better thing than help other people. And we've heard it tonight. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to spend money. All you need to be is you need to be respectful to other people, understand what their difficulties are, and make sure that if you can help in a, even a small way, cooking a hot dinner, going to see somebody in a care home that hasn't got any visitors, anything like that, just that one thing, and I guarantee 
that when you've helped that person, you will feel a much better person yourself. Thank you very much. That's me. So, any questions, please, for uh, Paul? Yeah, where's the mic? Give the mic to you. Uh, open here. It's about skating. Yes. Um, yeah, I remember it first me because I was chancellor. The same was seen because Bob Burgess. All right, yes. Yeah, yeah, the last year, yeah. So I remember your name. Um, the question I have is, for the community here, the community who have settled here, third or fourth generation community from Asian countries, um, and the youth among them, how can they participate um, in the wonderful um, place you have developed over the years, and you, know, you have, of course, given your life to it to make it happen? Uh, and the community uh, can, the youth, especially the young and middle aged, can um, be, be participating of, <coughs> or, or can duplicate it. And, and, and um, not, I know that Fisher is famous for its royal connection with the cavalry and so on and so and because our prophet and himself has um, eulogized the um, the exercised um, horses uh, especially mentioned um, in our religious literature well we can all help but um to be fair, sometimes horses aren't everybody's cup of tea. They're big animals and a lot of people are frightened of them. But there's lots of ways you can help in relation to um, possibly looking at... Uh, uh, one of the charities I'm involved in is Guide Dogs for the Blind. Um, and <coughs> dog walking and, 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 and that type of thing that, that you can volunteer to do. But there's 101... Uh, I'll give you for an example as well. If, if you wanted to help out at, say, a football club, contact the, um, the um, county FA. I've just, uh, I've just managed to get two people from Birmingham University to come onto our youth council at, at the county FA to help out so that we can get young people's views. It's, you, you, know, you don't have to do a lot, but you must express yourselves because we're old. We've had our time to a degree right we've not got a lot of time to influence things now but you people have it's how you behave and it's how you see the future i saw the future when my first mobile phone weighed about seven pounds and you had to carry it around like this technology's come on, on your shoulder that, that's right yeah yeah technology's come on uh, and and we we now try to keep up with technology but just pressing a button on here sometimes it goes uh, it goes a y but you you young people are the future you are the people that will make a difference in society and it's up to you to determine what you want to do you don't have to do a massive amount like i say just make sure that you respect everything that's going on in the community and you'll find your own way it's not for me to tell you how you find your way but you will find your way because you, you will be good people, I know that. Thank you. Thank you.
Anything? Anybody else? Anybody want to ride on a horse? No, I, I think. Do you have a Facebook or Twitter or? Uh, yeah, we, we carriage driving's on the. If you want to go on Facebook, it's Springbridge Carriage Driving. I want you ask them because they're very good, very good in this kind of technology. To promote your Facebook yes. page, to promote your Twitter page, and to help in fundraising on online. Yes. Sure if you do that, you do that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we would do. But, but more importantly, if you know anybody yeah. that might want to come up yes. and experience, and then you could come up with them and look at the facilities and see what we've got. There is a lot of horse poo about, let me tell you. <laughs> it's not such a great environment as I've actually dictated on there. So you have to have... Some idea of how much poo these horses do. <laughs> tons, tons. <laughs> tons. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. Will you be staying with us to eat? Uh, I'll go and check on the wife first yeah. to make sure she's all right. You know. <laughs> she can come and if, 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 if I say that I've gone home and I've had a full <laughs> meal and she's sitting there with my tea on, <laughs> it, it could be warm. But we yes, I'd like to stop for some we, food. We would love to stay, yes. to stay and eat and yeah. we can, we can uh, ask Mm. questions and get some more experience from Yeah, them. that's great. That's great. Mm. Right, thank you. Any more yeah. questions, brother and sister? I think now maybe it's time to pray. Yeah, sure. Huh? Yeah, sure. Any last question? Yeah, any questions, please. Any last the pressing question? What I like about Dr. Hani, if he's at home. No, 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 the days where we, we, we take the children round. It's a bit the insurance to take them out on the carriage is a bit there. But if with disabled people, yes, we take them out. But we do have a, quite a lot of as you, as you can see from the pictures, a lot a lot of disabled people. But we do do I mean if, if, if one day some of the children wanted to come up, we could arrange a day where you came up and, and showed you round and, and have a look. And we don't charge. <laughs> Un, unlike a lot of places. <laughs> Yeah, just I, I make a last comment uh, in support of this project. Yes. Dealing with the disabled is not something easy. It's something extremely difficult. And something could be impossible sometimes. Could be impossible sometimes. <coughs> it's a noble case. It's a noble mission to bring those people who cannot walk we cannot hear, we cannot see, huh? to have fun for one day. Should make it as a part of our religion. How many disabled individuals are at home and love to come out to the outside world to be there? Dealing with horses is a difficult case as well. You see, all these kind of things that we are lacking in our community, we help people, but we help horses, we help dogs, we help disabled people as well. So it's not only our money should be going to Bangladesh or India or Pakistan or Egypt or Palestine or whatever, it also stays here with noble people who are trying to work hard, quietly, nobody noticing them. So responding to the question of the sister, organize a group visit for the children. And he, maybe once a month, when he can open the place for them, when he knows that five or 10 or 20 people are coming. But there's nothing for free. Sorry, say that. <laughs> you say free, I said no. Nothing for free. Nothing. We cannot go and have fun for free. We we'll pay for the cinema, we we'll pay for the theater, we pay for McDonald's, we pay for Burger King, what's the other one? KFC. 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 
<laughs> I stopped eating it because it's too heavy for my stomach. But actually, you know what he said? He became like a coach for the young people. This is a dream. Look at Cristiano Ronaldo. How he was when he was young and he could not be able to have a pair of shoes. And where's Cristiano Ronaldo today? Gary Lenka, which is actually what he talked about. Where's Gary Lenka, Lenka today? And where he was at that age. And many of those people. But actually, you make a star. Creating a star is something which is not easy. But creating a star who has value is more difficult. And today, we are celebrating one of our stars. Can you stand up, please, there? To greet him, all of us. <laughs> Not because he's a royal or he's a noble from a noble family, but because he has he has a noble cause in life for people who need service. And God bless you. May Allah reward you in this life and in the life to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll learn from you. I think we should thank uh, both speakers for coming and spending this wonderful time with us. And uh, we, we would like to see more volunteers in this place. That's the main aim of this lecture, to give more time and be here uh, whenever there is a, a project for good. Uh, for, so you stay with us for food. Yes. Yeah, check the wife. We pray while he checks his wife. Brother, he can bring his wife. He can bring your wife. He can bring your wife. Yeah, they're gonna eat in the school because this one I don't think would be enough for both of us. He can bring your wife. Come, yeah. Yeah, no, no, she must come. She must be undressed. Thank you, thank you. 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 Anybody's got